Confinement Report starting Tuesday. <laughs> Twin Cities Live. Are you excited? Are you excited? I know you're excited. Are you excited? I know you can't hardly stand it. And you brought those flowers just for me, didn't you? Well, let me tell you, today we have a special guest for you. Long before Crocodile Dundee ever knew what a crocodile was, this woman made a lot of, especially young men in this country, fall in love with the country of Australia. We are going to have a great fun time today, and we are very proud to be able to welcome to Twin Cities Live and the Twin Cities, Olivia Newton. John. You know, I don't normally do this, but go up and, and here. You want to, I'll walk up with you, give her the flowers, say hello. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Let's see. All right. Okay, now we've got, now, now we can sell. Now, are you going to cry because I didn't let you? Go ahead. Go ahead. Give her the flowers real quickly. Let's get this out of the way. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pretty, nice. pretty dead crowd today, Olivia. You know? You missed one. You missed oh, one more. This last one. This is the last. <laughs> the last one. Oh, my God. Thank you. Okay, now. I'm getting spoiled now. Well, how do, you, how do you feel? Stand up here. How do you feel? Can you stand up? No, no. Oh, don't cry. <laughs> oh, Are you excited about having met her? <laughs> what is it that uh, about Olivia that seems to have this effect on you? I don't know. I don't know. She's great. She's excellent. She's the best. Can you make it through the rest of the hour? I hope so. <laughs> I don't like when I say before. Do you ever? <laughs> do you ever get used to that? No, it still kind of shocks me. You okay? <laughs> Oh, goodness. It, 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 it still shocks right. you when people react that way to you, does it? Uh, yeah, it does, rather. <laughs> well, but it's very flattering, but I still wanted to get sick, you all right? <laughs> she's fine. She's, she's fine. I hope she's fine. Well, I'll tell you, I, everybody's been uh, grabbing me aside and saying, Bob, are you really having Olivia Newton-John on your show? I mean, every male friend that I have... <laughs> You know, was bribing me to come down and be part of the studio audience today. It's amazing. When I was reading back through your biography, and, and I remember all your records and albums and movies and everything else, but I had never realized the type of family that you came from uh, in Australia. And I think mm -hmm. many people would be surprised that music was not one of the major themes in your no, family. No, my family is very academic and, um, you know, brainy. <laughs> and uh, my father was a professor at university, and my uncle um, was a professor, and my grandfather won the Nobel Prize, and so there was a, quite a lot of pressure on me to finish school, which I didn't even do. You notice how she said, well, my granddad, he, he won the <laughs> Nobel Prize one weekend, he just had nothing else to do. Did so, they resist, I, usually when you have a family like that that's so involved in academics, did they resist your going into music? Uh, yes, a little bit. My sister kind of paved the way because she left school at 15, and was an actress first so she kind of did it first she was the first black sheep and she kind of went come on you can do it you know <laughs> and she kind of encouraged me to sing because she felt that i could do it and um there was resistance my mother wanted me to finish school and my dad said well whatever makes you happy because he could have been a singer 
or um, he had the choice of singing or academia, and he chose to be a professor, but he had a wonderful voice, which is what? Not wonderful, but I inherited his voice anyway. You think that's where you got your... I think so. He's Welsh. Singing. You know, and the Welsh have singing in their blood. Yeah. You started out awfully young, and I never really knew the story until I was reading about you, about how you, how you got to the United States. How did you first come here, and you were really in that first wave? Of, you know, recently, yeah. there's been such a big to-do about Australia. I mean, Americans have really fallen in love with that country, with Crocodile Dundee, the movie, with all kinds of merchandising, with the America's Cup. Uh, you were here long before that ever even started. Yeah, I was here when it wasn't fashionable to be an Australian. They used to, they used to try and get me to... Um, change my accent. When I was going to do Greece, the producer said to me, do you think you could learn an American accent for the movie? I said, no, I think so. I said, is there any way you can write me in as being Australian? And so that's, you know, at that stage, all the actors I knew had to learn an American accent. But now it's kind of, you know, the end thing to be an Aussie. So I'm lucky I didn't change. <laughs> right. Now, for those of you at home, just to answer some of the questions that I'll be asked over the next couple of weeks, your career has changed uh, uh, dramatically throughout the years. You've done all kinds of different things. Uh, and just continually moved on to, to more and more success. But goodness, I'll tell you, you'll look, you'll look exactly, except for the change in the hair or whatever, you look just like you did when you first came to this country. You look very, very beautiful and oh. young, and it is not the camera or... <laughs> or a lot of makeup. I mean, it's just very fresh and natural. I mean, uh, some of the ladies, I'm sure, would want to know what's your secret. Um, I'm happy. <laughs> I think basically, I guess, um, I'm lucky genetically, um, and also I'm very happy, and I think that's what it is. I don't know. Doesn't she look good? Yeah, she's real pretty, more Thank than you. I uh, imagined. <laughs> um, do you have children? I do, husband? I have a daughter. Just one? I have one daughter, 21 months old. She's at home, her name's Chloe, and I miss her a lot. <laughs> and she's gorgeous, she's intelligent, she's... Um, funny. She's the funniest child I've ever met. She keeps me laughing all the time. You're not the least bit proud of her, are you? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did that change you? Uh, Shelley Long was here recently, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, she has a child now. She said it changed her dramatically and made her into a little bit of a different person in how totally she different. viewed things. Uh, it just put my life in perspective. I think having children, I didn't realize that there was a whole other world out there I didn't know existed. And I think kids broaden your horizons. They make you see what's important. I mean, I had my feet on the ground pretty well, but she's got them stuck in the mud now. I mean, <laughs> she, um, she just gave me so much joy to watch her and watch her grow and learn to speak. And she's a priority. And I've met all kinds of different people through her because they say that you meet two times in your life, you meet people, one's at school and one's when you have children. It's true because now I mix with people that have children and it's fantastic. I love it. As far as your career goes, uh, with your family, building a family, and also building a business, which we're going to talk about, I uh, haven't seen as much of you as when, you know, you had the big album mm -hmm. and you were doing movies and everything else. Is this uh, something you're going to continue, or are, you going to, are we going to see more of you on the entertainment side of business? Because we are going to talk about the uh -huh. clothing side of your business. Well, I, I stopped, really. I got married, and I wanted to have children. That was, you know, that was the main reason for getting married. I wanted to start a family, so I didn't... Work. I haven't worked really for about three years, and uh, I just wanted to give Chloe my full attention, especially for the first two years, which are very important. And it was kind of very hard. I just started an album, at least I'm halfway through it now. That'll be out next year, but it was very hard to go back to work, really hard. I, and I, I plan my recording sessions around her, so I'll go in the morning, and then um, my husband will bring her down, we'll have lunch together, and then I'll record a bit more, and then I'll go home and give her dinner, so I try not to miss too much. How are you able to sort of step back? From that because many people in the performing business and show business they they can't give it up not even mm. for a year they've always got to be involved in it it wasn't difficult it was easy it was <laughs> i really um i don't really miss the live performance some people have a need to be on stage and to feel that energy i mean that's wonderful i came out here and it was like Ooh! this is like it's fantastic feeling to feel all this love i guess i can say from all of you it's wonderful but i I don't crave that. I, I'm very happy just singing. I love to sing, I love to record, and I like to write, which I've done on this album. But I don't need to do the live stuff, so I'm going to do a special instead. Yeah, in case, any, uh, in case I missed any movies, how many did you do? Let me see. <laughs> I did one uh, when I was a teenager in England called Tomorrow that nobody's seen, and I'm very glad. It's very bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was really bad. That was my first film. Then I came to America, and, and I was lucky enough to do Grease 
which a lot of people saw, and I'm very glad for that. And then I did um, Xanadu, which was a musical with Gene Kelly, and then I did Two of a Kind, which was uh, a re-teaming up with John Travolta, so I've done four. During that time, you sort of changed your image from when you first yeah, came bit, yeah. to, to this country. Uh, when you first came here, it's so sweet and innocent, and I honestly love I still remember the tape of that. I mean, it was mm -hmm. long before music videos, I mean, really hit, but uh, then you really changed drastically. W was it something that you made a conscious decision that I don't want to be locked into this the rest of my life? I don't want to be the little... Um, it was partly that. It was partly the music dictating the changes. For instance, when I went to do Greece, the reason that I loved the part, and I was very lucky to get it, but I loved the part was because um, she got to change at the end. And I thought, God, this is a great excuse for me to grow. And so that was a challenge in itself. I tested it on the crew before I did the um, film. And we'd been filming Sandy for about two months, and I, I dressed up in the black leather outfit one night and did my hair up and lit a cigarette and walked through the crew, and no one knew who I was. I thought, this is great. <laughs> this is great. And the reactions I got were so different that that was really fun. So I think Greece gave me the um, kind of courage to change a little bit and to grow because I think what happens is, you you know, I was growing up and I wasn't the same little girl when I started. I was growing up into a woman and I wanted to try new things. But so many fans can get used to, you know, if, if the celebrity is their favorite star mm -hmm. and they're used to that one particular image and all of a sudden the star changes that image to mm -hmm. something else. Did you get some resistance when uh, let's get physical and... and I'm sure I did. I'm sure that I probably lost a few on the way, and um, maybe I gained They're shaking some their heads. No, <laughs> no, no. No, but I may have gained some others that hadn't. I mean, that's a gamble you take when you when you make a change, I think. Any kind of change. Change is good. Change is... But you have to be brave and, and take the step. I feel now with this album, I'm kind of going more back to, to me, myself, without an quote image. It's just me. This next album is um, the songs I've written, so they're from the heart and it's more about life now and what it's like to be a woman in the 80s and have a family and things. Tell me about the clothing business and why you got into it. Very difficult, very highly competitive uh -huh. uh, and suddenly you're you're immersed in it. Yeah, excuse me a second. Cheers everyone. Go right ahead. It really didn't start out that I said I'm going to go in the clothing business. How it happened was when I was doing the physical tour I was um, touring and I was homesick for Australia. What I wanted was a meat pie and a milkshake, which is an Australian tradition, you know, like you have a hamburger and, a, and fries, I suppose, and a Coke. Or something. And uh, I was telling my friend, Pat Farrow, who had been my singing partner mm, years ago, 20 years ago, we used to sing together. And um, she called me the next day and said, well, I've been thinking about a clothing shop. Why don't we combine the Australian food part? Because I wanted an Australian hangout where we could all go and get a, you know, um, an Australian newspaper and get a drink and it would be a place for all these to congregate, really. So she said, why don't we combine the two things, have clothing and the food. So that's how it started. We thought it'd be a great idea to open one little shop that would be a place where we could do all this. So we packed our bags and we went to Australia. I wasn't working at the time. I don't know what, I don't know what time of year it was. And we had briefcases and we were very professional, didn't know what we were doing, of course. And <laughs> went around to all the different clothing stores and picked out the stuff we liked and went to toy stores and picked out things we thought Americans would like and books and candy and pulled it all together and uh, opened our first store. And we sold mainly imported, everything was imported in the beginning. And at the opening party we had some t-shirts printed up with koala blue written on them and we gave them away as a thank you for the people for coming to the party we had some left we put them on the shelf and the first day they sold and we thought oh this is a good look here i think this maybe this is what they want so we kept printing up stuff with koala blue and the more we made the more sold and then eventually it grew into uh, our own line but before we had more than one or two shops we couldn't do a lot of stuff. So. You now have a shop here in the Twin Cities yeah. at the Conservatory. And when we come back, we will see some of the clothing from Koala Blue and your own personal designs because you right. are deeply involved in the designing of these clothes. A little fashion show for you and more with Olivia Newton-John on Twin Cities Live in just a moment. <laughs> 